Hey, it's Sabi here. I am back for experiment number two. So this is going to be the first video of two for this experiment, only because it did take me a long time and I just kind of want to split up the videos so that they're not so long. I'm going to test all the brushes and see which ones have a heavier file load than the others. And the reason I'm going to do this is kind of just to see which brushes I might use more sparingly if I'm making a large piece of artwork with lots of details, just to try and avoid the lag that happens. I have four rows here. This first row is going to have brushes that have a shadow and are 2D. The next one will be shadowed brushes but 3D. This category will be non-shadowed and the last one will be the non-shadowed 3D brushes. And the reason that I am going to organize them this way is because when I'm thinking if the brush stroke casts a shadow that's just an extra feature of that brush that maybe is you know, taking up file space and making that a more, you know, complicated brush stroke. In contrast, you have the non-shadow where they don't cast a shadow, so the file does not have to create a shadow for that brush stroke. So I'm just taking a guess here and thinking that shadowed brushes are going to have a heavier file load than a non-shadowed brush. And of course, a 3D brush is going to have a heavier load than a 2D brush. So I'm going to break this grid up further into columns. And this first column is going to be unlit. And these type of brushes have a surface that when you look at it, it does not reflect light. So all the way around the object, no matter what your lighting is, the color and the intensity of that color is the same. So it doesn't change. There's no gradient of the color around the object. The next one will be matte surfaces. And these brushes do have a gradient according to the light around the brush stroke or according to the angle of the brush stroke, but the surface is matte. And this column here is the shiny brushes, exactly the same as the matte, but just a shiny surface. So this one is going to be the special effects brushes, the illuminated. The brush doesn't move, it's not animated. So the next special effects column will be the animated. And here I'm just going to put other because well, you know, we always have to have that group, right? <laughs> okay, so let's get started. I guess I can just say what I think is going to happen. I think that the shadowed 3D brushes, special effects, you know, animated, are going to be the heaviest load on the file, but we'll see. So what I'm going to do is organize all the brushes according to my observations, and I'm going to test each brush and see how much the file is per brush once I save it. Alright, so I'm going to start with the very first brush, the oil paint, and this brush is a bit shiny. What I'm going to do is cut a brush stroke down here. That's going to tell me if the brush stroke has a shadow or not, and this has a shiny surface and projects a shadow and is a 2D brush. So 2D shadow, shiny, and I'll put that there. Ink gives a shadow. So let's look at the surface. It is shiny. So right next to the oil brush. Thick paint is a 2D brush and it gives a shadow, you know. It looks shiny, because it gets brighter at like certain angles. I don't know, what do you guys think? I'm gonna put it in the shiny category for now. Wet paint, I already know, is super shiny. And it gives a shadow, and it's 2D. You can see the shine. It's really pretty. These three, I already know that they are unlit surfaces, but let me go ahead and show you. Let's get a different color, just for fun and they don't give a shadow and the surface is the same shade at every angle and there's no shadow and it's 2D so non-shadow, unlit, 2D and the tapered is the same so is the pinched because they're all marker. The highlighters do not give a shadow. They're very sheer. When you overlap them like that they start to build a brightness. I don't know this one's kind of different. If you just take one layer this angle has the same gradient and this angle you know has got the same gradient but of course when it overlaps you Get a different gradient but if we're just going just for the surface i would say it's unlit and it doesn't give a shadow and it's 2d so unlit no shadow 2d right here with the markers and the soft highlighter is just softer and these are the flat brushes they're just different shapes so let's take a look at that one so this one gives a shadow and it does have a different gradient of color at each angle it is a lit surface I guess if we're comparing it to unlit and it's a 2D brush, it gives a shadow and it's matte. So all of the flat brushes, they'll go right here. All right, special effects, light. Light does not give a shadow <laughs> and nor in real life does it. Well, it creates shadows, 
But anyways, the surface is illuminated, so it's not shadow. 2D, illuminated special effects. And fire is pretty much the same. There's no shadow. It's a 2D brush, and it's illuminated surface, but it does move, so it's animated. So non-shadow, 2D, and then right here, animated special effects. Embers don't cast a shadow. You can kind of see it on the tip of the controller. It's the shape of like a cube, I think. That's just kind of what I see. A cube is 3D, so I will go ahead and say it's a 3D brush. It does not give a shadow and it's animated, so let me put it right here. Smoke does not give a shadow and it's definitely a 3D brush. I mean, it's all over the place, so you can kind of see it's a matte surface. I don't know, this one's kind of hard. <laughs> so it's a non-shadow 3D. I want to say it's a matte surface, but it kind of moves a little. So it's also animated, so I think for now I will put this brush right here in other because I'm not really sure about this one, so... Okay, and now there is snow. This one, there's no shadow. If I'm looking at the actual snowflake, you know, like here while it's falling, it looks the same all the way around. That is so weird. And then it disappears. Okay, so every angle, it looks the same. <laughs> I've never noticed that before. I'm going to go ahead and say this is a 3D brush. So no shadow, 3D, animated special effects. All right, rainbow. <laughs> That's cute. No shadow. It is animated, and it's 2D right there. So the stars, special effects animated, so right here. And velvet ink, no shadow, and it behaves like the highlighter, so I'm probably just going to put it next to the highlighter. Yeah. Paper. Okay, you can already see it has a shadow. So yeah, shadow, it's 2D, the surface is matte. So paper goes right next to the flat brushes. Okay, duct tape has a shadow and the surface is shiny and it's 2D and splatter has a shadow it is 2D and the surface is it is a matte surface and so wave form it's light it's energy it's not going to give a shadow and it's animated special effects and it is a 2D brush the coarse brush gives a shadow it's 2D and the surface changes gradient according to angle to the lighting and it's a matte surface so matte 2D shadow. So Dr. Wiggles gives a shadow. It's special effects animated and the surface is matte. Actually it might be a little shiny but that doesn't matter because it's going in animated special effects. Electricity is the same as waveform. This is actually a 3D brush and streamers don't give a shadow. It's 2D and it's animated special effects. Cell vinyl has no shadow. The surface is unlit. As you can see at every angle, no matter what your lighting is, the color gradient is the same and it is 2D. Next is neon pulse and no shadow and it's a 3D brush. You can see it's a tube and it's animated. Bubbles don't give a shadow and they are animated and 3D. This is filling up here. Okay, hypercolor gives a shadow. It's 2D and is animated. And my favorite one, dots. No shadow, they are 3D illuminated. Chromatic wave is, again, you know, like a light. It is 3D animated, no shadow. So right here, again with this box, I should have made this bigger. Light wire gives a shadow. It's 3D and it's animated. Okay, so here is that box that I think it's, you know, going to be the heaviest file load. So we'll see. Hypergrid, no shadow. It's 3D made of a bunch of 2D brush strokes. Oh, that's 2D right there. So I guess it just depends. Uh, let me see. Let me get the straight edge. Oh, that's so weird. It changes. Oh, and then you let go and it does its own thing. That's interesting. I'm going to go ahead and say it's a 3D brush. The surface is matte and I want to say unlit brush. It's so weird. <laughs> okay, last page. Petal. Petal gives a shadow. It is a matte surface and 3D. Icing gives a shadow. It's 3D and it has a matte textured surface. The Tune Brush gives a shadow, it's 3D as well, but it is an unlit surface. The color gradient is the same everywhere. Fire, it does not give a shadow, it's a 3D brush, and the surface is unlit. 
The comet is non-shadowed. It's 3D. It is animated. Disco shadow animated 3D brush. It's really pretty. Animated right here. And Lofted has a shadow. It's a 3D brush and it is a matte surface. Spikes, I believe, is pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it's matte, 3D, shadow. Okay, and this is the same brush, it just has different surfaces. So this is a 3D brush. This is the shiny hole, so this is one brush stroke. It's the shape of, you know, like a cut jewel, and it's very shiny, 3D, and casts a shadow. The matte is matte, obviously, and it casts a shadow, it's 3D. The unlit is no shadow, it's unlit and 3D. The diamond does not cast a shadow either. It's it's a 3D brush and I want to say the surface is very shiny. You know, you can see the reflections, yeah, right there. So a non-shadow 3D shiny surface, one of a kind. And so while I was doing my experiment, a fellow VR artist, 3 Donimus, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He drew my attention to the fact that the particle brushes might affect the performance. So I'm going to go ahead and make a, a column for the particle brushes just to see if that also affects the file size. And it does make me wonder if file size and performance are related or not. So that would be a whole, a whole nother experiment, I think. <laughs> but I think I'm on the right track. So I'm going to go ahead and just rearrange this a little bit. And so up here, I'm going to add particle and I will just switch these real quick. And so it will be particle special effects. So I think I've identified the particle brushes because when I select these certain ones, they kind of have squares where the particle is coming from. And so if I select the hypergrid, you can kind of see the square and then they just stack on each other and the bubbles as well. And the smoke also has these squares. So I'm just gonna check all of these. Snow and stars in the embers. That's interesting. They have a square, but they're flowing upward. And then dots are each on a square. And so there it is. I organized all the brushes to the best of my ability <laughs> with my limited tech background and no experience in 3D, so. <laughs> It's all observation. I organized them according to the surface and then I added the particle according to its makeup. So I think that will actually be another chart, you know, going a little deeper than just visual and actually discovering, you know, the makeup of the brush, like alpha particles, um, whatever else there is, which I'm not aware of. And so I'm actually going to break this experiment up into two videos. So this was the first video and here I just kind of organized the brushes according to the surface and if they gave a shadow and were 2D and 3D. And I found this actually really fun because I was able to really examine, you know, each brush up close and just kind of think about it. So here I'm really, you know, learning about this new medium and it's amazing. I can't even explain just how it makes me feel to be able to do art in virtual reality. I'm sure a lot of you also feel the same way. So moving on, I am going to go ahead and post this first video, part one of two, for this experiment. I'm really excited to continue my experiments, so I will get that second video up and see what the results are. So thanks for watching and I'll see you here again soon.